Hello, I'm Professor Joe Goldblatt, the treasurer of the Edinburgh Interfaith Association, and I am delighted to welcome two very special guests all the way from Orlando, Florida, two folks who I've known for a very long time and have admired their work primarily in charity. They have done so much work opening their homes to wayward folk. They have raised millions of dollars for local charities in Orlando and throughout the United States. And uh, they are both teachers, producers, entertainers. They have a long career in the entertainment industry. In fact, I believe they met in Hawaii uh, nearly 50, over 50 years ago uh, during a production of Hello Dolly, the great musical. So I'm just delighted that they're joining us today. And Becky, I was wondering if I might start with you and you might tell us a little bit about your faith journey. Have you always had a deep commitment to faith or have things in recent years deepened that, that journey? Tell me a little bit about your experience with faith. When I was growing up, the school that I went to in Hawaii was Punahou, and we had chapel every week, which was nominal. I mean, it was, I, I look back at it going, what was that? So there wasn't any great deep faith at that point because I wasn't exposed to things, which as I look back on it, I'm very glad I didn't because so much has now been exposed that is not, it's all ritual, it's not a faith. And so when we started on Disney on Parade, man, that was another story, but there was some people that, who had a lot of faith. And so I was watching them and looking at them going, how did they do that? And so I got some picked books. One was, uh, oh, what was it called? Catherine, not, not Catherine Freeman. Anyway, and I was reading Catherine Marshall, Marshall, and her husband had been the, from Ireland, and he had a, was it, yeah, Ireland. He had a, became the chaplain for the United States Senate. So I'm going, well, something they, you know, they said he went for absolutely nothing and had to come and he followed God's plan for him. And so that intrigued me because I'm going, if God has a plan for him, what about me? And mm -hmm. you go through all of these things and people tell you, you're really not important. When you're, when you're told you're not important, just do whatever you're doing. It doesn't help you. It really is very depressing. And so going through that and have, watching people who got over that and the thing now, looking back on it, our pastor has said this. He says, joy is your strength. That's what the Bible says. But it's your choice. You choose if you're going to be joyful or if you're going to be unhappy. And he says, one makes you healthy, the other makes you sick. And so having, going through this, when we moved here to Orlando, we've been on the road, gone a lot of places in Europe, in South Africa, in South America. I mean, we all over the United States, Canada, Mexico. And so, you know, you exposed to a lot of different things. So for me, having that exposure, I started going, what's really real? And when you talk about, when you look back on things, you said, God designed this so I could be at this point. And I was at a point where I didn't really know what was going on. My children were getting wild and I didn't know what was going on, but I knew something was wrong. And I met some very dear friends. Um, and that's where I started going to this one prophet, Leo Jenkins. And I went there and he said something to me. And I thought, wow. He said, there's a mountain of trouble over you, but it's all going to be all right. Hmm. And at that point, we couldn't get a building permit. We were, we were spending $2,000. This is back in 1990. $2,000 a week 
which was a lot of money, on this place that we were renting because we couldn't get a permit. After I went to that service, we got the permit, and this was back in 90, it was going into 91, 92, and there was no money. There was a real crash. So we ended up going, God said, we're going to do this. And the people are going, I don't know how. But we built the building, big building. People were amazed that in six months, because we went from absolute nothing on the, on the there, it's just a uh, forest at that point. And so all of that happened. And it's like, how did that happen that quickly? And you don't understand, and you have to learn things. You have to learn how God speaks to you. And I was learning that. So that's what has been going on. And we've gone through a lot of things of everything I've needed. I didn't know at the time. I would complain which that's the worst thing you can do. It opens the door. So my children, I watched them. My son, John, had uh, macular, uh, what is it? No, the, uh, this, where your face goes one side, it's in your Bill's ear. palsy. And mm -hmm. that, I mean, he, he was his whole face. And mm -hmm. after prayer, it went away. And you're going, wow. I mean, that's the kind of thing you're going, this is when it says signs and wonders will follow you. And you're going, wow, that just happened. And I've seen things with him. I've seen things with other people. And this is the part that I think is so important that people have to realize when you have a relationship with Jesus. Mm. God is there, but Jesus did the end. He paid the price for you. And when you start seeing this, it says, you know, faith comes from my hearing. But Jesus taught first, then he healed. And people, I mean, they didn't know anything when they were being healed in, in the Bible. Well, so I knew the thing. I was at the same point. I didn't know anything. And so all of these things started teaching me. So when this whole thing with my tumor, it's not my tumor, it's somebody else's tumor. When that started coming in, um, I had a, a dream and God said to me, Oh, Jesus, it was a beautiful turquoise light. And he said, I'm healing you. So, okay. So when I went in there, I said, no, God's healing me. He told me. And that's where he does speak to everybody because he loves every single person. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. He created you. He wants you to know him so he can help you, so he can heal you, so he can uh, prosper you and that's the thing I, I look at what things that we've gone through when we first started Jean was a dancer and uh, I was just in high school <laughs> and we had nothing I mean Jean had a car and that was it and so from that and I look around going oh goodness I mean we had been so blessed but in that process I've had a lot of people come in here We've had, I feel like we've had a hotel. A lot of my friends, my children's friends, I've had a lot of people live with us. I've had people from Germany. Uh, they, Uli and Oliver Bowser, lived with me for a, a year each. And Oliver didn't believe anything, but he learned. Mm. And it wasn't just what I said, it's where we were doing things. It was by the action they watched you. And so all of these people, we, I, I look at them going, they were supposed to be here this week or this, yeah, this week, but the pandemic has really messed that up. So they're not. Mm. But those are the things that I, I look back on and it's not just preaching. I'm not, I don't preach. But when you're going through and you're helping people, you're showing them and they're seeing these things, and then they see healings, you're going, I mean, that's the part that my doctor is going, mm -hmm. this is, you're a miracle. I mean, she said that to me yesterday. And I said, yeah, well, because that's what he promised. And when you stand on his promises, then you can go forward. And I'm still learning, because if you call things that be not, mm -hmm. as though they were, 
because there's a, a guy named Charles Cat because if you want the dog, don't call the cat. <laughs> <laughs> because and that's the whole thing. And that's where I've been learning that and I speak things into existence. It's like the tornadoes and all the hurricanes that come around us. We have control over that because we are a child of God. And we've been through several hurricanes. We've lost some leaves. And I have a house full of trees. We've lost some leaves. We have not been hit. Other people have had, you know, the whole house turned down. And these are things because I've learned if I speak to it in faith, because Jesus said, you do it. <laughs> okay. I, I'm supposed to speak to this hurricane? Yes. And they, they miss us. The last one, the really big one that came in, they thought it was going to be a, a cat five. When it got to Orlando, it was not even a cat one. And it was not even a circle, it was a straight line. And those are the kinds of things when you know this is what you can do to protect your family. This is what you can do to protect your city, what you can do to protect your nation. And these are things that there's evil, there's fighting, there's good. And you have to sh start saying the good things. And the good things are what Jesus said. And then you, use, and you use it. And that's what I do. I mean, <laughs> he had a lot of a lot of weather issues. Yeah. But not a minute. What an inspiring story of faith in health, faith in building, faith in family and marriage, and even faith in all the natural world around us. And what I take away from that is how important it is that you have a partnership with some supreme being, Jesus, God, Muhammad, etc. That you have that you have a, a partnership. Jane, speaking of partnerships, both you and Becky started your career as dancers. And I was wondering if you could tell me when you were dancing in the movies and on television, is dancing a spiritual endeavor? When you're dancing with other people, is there something spiritual to that? Uh, it was uh, interesting that uh, I was attracted the word attracted would be appropriate to say that I, I got involved uh, because uh, I had a wild crush on a 16-year-old on a girl. I was, I was 14. And this wild crush, I got involved, but, but uh, uh, for the first time in my life, uh, I, I felt uh, I, 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 I fell in love with that, and it was where uh, people said, "You're really good at that," and, and it was the first time that that I was getting that positive reinforcement, mm -hmm. and and it did speak to my spirit, and I uh, I I so loved it. I loved all aspects uh, of, of performing and, and actually uh, even if I couldn't perform, I would volunteer. I would work backstage. I, I would do whatever it was. I just was, was uh, I, I was, I found a home. I found a place. I found uh, uh, other people. Then we shared this love. Now, uh, I was uh, uh, I was a, a, a Catholic boy, uh, you know, an Italian father and uh, an Irish mother, and and uh, it was church on Sunday, uh, but it was ritual. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was just you just do it, and whether or not uh, it connects to you. Uh, but I got curious, and I, I there was a wonderful Jesuit priest. Uh, uh, because I also was an altar boy, so I uh, I had opportunities uh, after mass. Uh, you know, I uh, I had seniority uh, because I had served mass the longest, so I got the best uh, mass ever. I, I would do the twelve o'clock mass, and and I had my own cassock, uh, and and what it was was <laughs> it was long enough because you weren't supposed to wear blue jeans. Well. Uh, 
I wore this one that was so long you could not tell whether or not I was wearing blue jeans. <laughs> and and uh, uh, <coughs> it was, in some ways, it was a performance. But also, th th there was something that did, did speak to me. I will say that, uh, like many people, uh, you know, we, we know the story of the prodigal son and uh, going off. And I, I won't say that I went wild or anything. It, it was just that um, uh, I got into that confusing part of life where I was looking for direction and, um, and, and, and finding confidence. And I would, I would say I always had a, a, a sense that, 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 that I was being looked after. I, that somebody or something was always put in my life to guide and, and, and direct me to where, uh, where, where I was supposed, and I believe I was supposed can to I interrupt, be. Can I interrupt? When you were sick, because he was, um, his parents, his mother had tuberculosis, tuberculosis, I can do this, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis. So that's it. He was put in an orphanage and his brother, who was one and he was supposed to take care of, he was sick, take care of a one-year-old and one-year-old did something, broke something. Mm. And he was having to scrub, scrub the floor of the orphanage, the tile floor. And he was getting, I mean, he was falling apart because his mother wasn't there, his father wasn't there, his brother was younger and his two sisters were in another orphanage. And God gave him an angel. And Brian yeah. told me that. And God gave him an angel that protected him because he really didn't learn to read because he was in three different or uh, orphanages, three different first grades. So he didn't learn how to read. When he was going through, when he finally got out of the or orphanage, he didn't know how to read. He was 12 years old. And so there was a lot of things that happened in between that, but God's always had an angel. He's always had someone watching over him because he couldn't, that, that was a real thing that when he, he dropped out of high school because he was being bullied and had to live on potatoes in his mother's beauty shop because he was being abused at home. So when he got his first job, he was doing something and he had an opportunity to join the first national tour of West Side Story, which he was perfect for. But the leading man decided that the only thing, way he could be on the path, be in the show, was if he slept with him. Right. And he said, I won't do that. So he gave up this, what looked like a great opportunity, but the catch was there, and he wouldn't do that. So when he got to Hollywood, he took a speed reading course, which that, that doesn't teach you much. So for him, having to sight read was hard. But for that, he was the one that wrote the uh, little memos. Everybody got to the point where they come in and say, Jim, would you help me? The PhDs at Disney point can get three page. And he says, no, it's too much. And he would rewrite it for them. So he was the one that this angel has helped him all the way along because um, we were, I was just told, you know, he's a miracle. But they, so, so that goes back to your theory of helper, being a helper. But Gene, where did all that come from? I mean, if you didn't have the guidance as a young child, where do you think that came from? Oh, well, it is certainly, uh, I would have to agree that I've, I've, had, uh, uh, I've had an angel in my corner. And I think that it, uh, uh, it was a it was about prize fighting, but my father was a, a boxer, and, and uh, he talked about the angel in his point. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it, the uh, being dyslexic uh, was 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 a it didn't help. Uh, it, it did not help, and and uh, um, and actually, I've I've coached uh, a number of young people that that have, uh, and I said right, one of the things that that uh, I. I had to learn very quickly is that I could not hide behind 
something I couldn't do when there was so much more. So, so, so uh, my, it's challenging uh, uh, to, uh, uh, with, with some aspects of writing, but there's always people, you know, and you know of, of uh, a number of them. Well, it wasn't just young kids. I mean, he would have such wisdom. And, and all of this has been given to him. I don't know if he realized it or not, but the people, executives at Disney would come to him and say, I'm up for this next job. Could you coach me and help me with my interview? And all, they all got to jobs. I mean, it was well, that, That's a really good point, because that brings me to your book. You're, as we know, a published author, the author of The Complete Guide to Careers in Special Events. Uh, by John Wiley and Sons. And I was wondering what some of the feedback you've gotten from readers of your book in terms of you helping them with their careers. Oh, uh, it, it's quite wonderful. Uh, actually, I, I have a, an amusing story. Uh, uh, we, uh, we were at Orlando Repertory Theater when I retired from Walt Disney World uh, in 2008. I accepted uh, the role as executive director of. Uh, Orlando Rep, uh, a theater company focused on family theater, uh, TYA, Theater for Young Audiences. Uh, I, I, I've got to say, I love children. And, and they bring great joy to, to my life. Uh, the, uh, uh, we had a wonderful uh, education director, but he got another opportunity and he had to move to South Florida. And uh, uh, we, brought in a, a former uh, uh, student that uh, got their uh, um, master's degree uh, at, at UCF and, and part of their, their training was done at Orlando Rep. And, and so uh, uh, she applied for this position and uh, uh, she just did an absolutely wonderful, amazing interview. And uh, uh, after you know, I, I made the offer and hired her, and then I had to. I said, "I'm, I am going to tell you, Jen, you were fabulous. That was an absolutely great interview." She said, "Thank you. I just read your book." <laughs> I could feel that coming. I could feel that coming. It was like, yeah, because everything was orderly. And she had a had a strategy, and in fact, uh, um, I, I I I this past semester at the Rosen School of Hospitality Management, uh, a very prominent school in in, in uh, the hospitality management uh, uh, education world, uh, I taught the careers class, and a number of the students uh, got the book uh, because they they they. Uh, they, they saw that the, the, uh, it was kind of a roadmap for them. And so, so uh, and, and I have to say thanks uh, uh, to Dr. Joe, uh, who, uh, who introduced me to uh, the, the publisher, John Wiley, and, and, and actually guided me uh, as, a, as an extremely uh, experienced and uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, writer and, and uh, educator he guided me through this uh, uh, through this process uh, it, it, it was uh, I, I can remember uh, uh, speaking at uh, I think it was Temple University and, and uh, 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 you uh, uh, after my, my lecture on, on, uh, on uh, how to ace the interview uh, you said you got to write a book and <laughs> I said, oh, sure, yeah, thinking that's just a, uh, but the knot hole was about that big that I felt myself yeah. being pulled through to get it done on time. Well, you did, you did a great job, and I have a feeling that that book is going to be more essential than ever before in your and my lifetime as a result, sadly, of the global COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing. And I was just wondering, as we close this interview today, what advice that you and Becky might have for our audience in terms of using their faith or spirituality 
to carry them through this unprecedented time. What might you say to those that are watching and listening to us today about how faith can help carry them through this difficult time? Uh, I think the first thing is, uh, and I'm sure uh, Ms. Becky will, will back me up on this, it, it's your words and your attitude. Uh, this is a time in which uh, can be a wonderful opportunity because uh, uh, so many of us say, sometime when I have the time, well, guess what? We have the time. <laughs> we have the time. And, uh, and it's a chance. Uh, I, I, it was a funny story about somebody said, well, you know, there's no football games. Uh, so we were watching television. And gee, I was sitting next to this really gorgeous woman. And I looked at her and I, oh my goodness, it's my wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, too often, I think we, uh, we overlook uh, uh, those things that are nearest and dearest to us. And we're looking and we're, we're worried so much about the future. We're not, we're not focused on our present. We cannot change the circumstances uh, uh, individual, but we can make choices as, as Becky had said, as we make choices of how we're gonna deal with it. And we should deal with it in a positive way. My students, I'm saying, this is the chance to uh, pick these companies, uh, research them, and, and these are the ones you're gonna apply for. And you get everything ready, including your cover letter and the resume that you're gonna submit take advantage of this time and don't dwell on the bad, but let's look. And, and that's where your faith comes in. Have faith that this, this will pass. And you have to have faith in something. And that's the word of God says, I will take care of you. Yeah. I will give you, you know, what you want. Well, it might not happen at your time, but yeah. you, you ask for it. And as long as in accordance to his word, hey, it's going to come. But that's what you have to learn. You know, it's interesting. You say the term I will in the Jewish tradition, when we have a death, which is, of course, one of the greatest shocks in, in a human life experience, we are told to praise God, mm -hmm. to say that we know everything will be right. We know that we will be well taken care of. I will again. So I will thank you both for this wonderful first interview for our new program called Spotlight on Faith and remind our audience that a lot of what Becky and Jean have been talking about today is really finding a partnership with something that you believe in, someone that you believe in. Uh, and in that regard, I understand this partnership is going to celebrate a very special milestone in August. So on behalf of the 5 million people of Scotland and all of those watching around the world, when it comes in August, a very happy 50th anniversary. And keep the faith. Thank you, Jean and Becky. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>